Welcome back. Tesla shares down another 5% in the pre-market on pace for the worst ever year for the stock. Today's drop comes on reports that the electric car maker has extended a production halt at its Shanghai factory. I think it's the most interesting story in the market. It's Tesla. Uh, right now, it hits another new low. The market cap has fallen now below Walmart and J.P. Morgan. That's stunning in and of itself. If you consider where it started this year, Joe, it was north of $1.2 trillion. Okay. Now it is, as I look at it now, it is like $355 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, take notes. It's time to learn about the stonk market. In particular, how occasionally things get so absurd, you just scratch your head and ask, what the actual fuck? This is definitely one of those times. Tesla stock continues to crater. It's now down almost 75% since its all-time high. Did you know? that Chipotle currently has a significantly higher forward PE than Tesla. Did you know that Coke and Pepsi both have equivalent PEs to Tesla? Yeah, that's right. Some slow growing diabetes companies with razor thin margins and a burrito company now, according to the stonk market, more valuable than Tesla. I mean, I don't know what else to say, ladies and gentlemen. And on that note, it's official. I finally decided to start my OnlyFans, onlyfans.com slash I am definitely not joking. Got to come up with some more cash to buy the dip somehow, right? I shared a lot more thoughts in detail today on my exclusive Patreon video. So if you're not a member, head over there with the card in the corner or the link at the pinned comment. But I just wanted to emphasize because I have to be on the record here in a few years time, anyone who was interested in investing back in 2022 will have no excuse for having missed the opportunity that Tesla stock represents at these levels. Now, of course, this isn't investing advice. I'm just sharing my opinion and looking forward to clipping it in a few years time and going, hey, look, remember when I said that? Tesla was there, now it's here. As you can see, I've moved back into my mum's basement just to afford a little bit more Tesla stock to buy the dip. Desperate times call for desperate measures. This moment in time is a great litmus test to determine whether or not you're really cut out for investing over the long term. If you're doing backflips and celebrating at the massive discount Tesla stock's currently available for, I think you're gonna make it. If you're crying in the corner, whining, complaining, and blaming, I don't think you're cut out for investing, and I genuinely do mean that. Your psychology as a long-term investor is critically important to avoiding enormous errors of judgment. Right now, investors are panicking their way out of growth stocks. Universally, makes absolutely no sense. Valuations are absolutely disconnected from reality, and yet it has still happened. I'm getting 2019 vibes all over again. Just for the record, I'm gonna share some details <laughs> Give a little bit of fodder to the basement dwelling Tesla Q virgins who continue to troll me, bro, you suck, you lost so much money, and so on. Because I just like to have this on the record and document the entire process. While you're crying, I'm buying. First, we'll watch a few clips in the mainstream finance media, sharing their thoughts on Tesla's crash. Spoiler alert. Oh, it's going down more, you better sell. Obviously, short-term time horizon. What else do you expect? And I'm also going to go into detail about my own thoughts about Tesla stock, where to from here. Turns out Elon's recent comments about avoiding margin, especially when it comes to investing in Tesla stock, are rather prophetic. Welcome back and still some time before the opening bell. So let's get a dive into some of the hot tickers that are trending this morning. We're going to start with Tesla. The stock is down about 5%, as you can see there. That's after the EV maker announced they have suspended production at its Shanghai plant due to a wave of COVID-19 cases among its workers. And Yahoo Finance's Praz Subramanian is is here tracking the story, joins us live now on set. Praz, what are the details here? Because these are, we, we had the zero COVID reaction uh, from the government and now we have the opposite of it. Yeah, you know, so they were going to shut down for Christmas break anyway for a few days and they extended the shutdown by a day. And apparently Reuters and, and the journal reporting that's because they had a, a wave of COVID infections at, at their factory, but also their suppliers. So they extended that break for a day. Traditionally, they don't actually take off probably that much time during the holidays, but now they are because of, hey, you know, demand slowing down in China. They actually have increased production at the, at the plant, so they're actually more productive there, so they don't need to be on um, a lot of those days. I know this is, we're going to come up with, with NEO, but I think that's NEO is a big reason why a lot of the shares of, of these EV makers are down today. Well, and just quickly, I want to say it also feels like that people are at this point looking for excuses to sell Tesla maybe into the end of the... I mean, the, the stock has just had such a terrible 2022. Yeah, and you have tax loss sell, selling season and all that stuff happening right now. I mean, look, it's down 5% today. You know, people are talking about $100 of support. I mean, this is it's, it's wild how, how deep the sell-off has been this month in, in Tesla in particular. So for sure, this is a stock trending in the wrong direction, for sure. Tesla stock today absolutely collapsing and i mean that down almost 11 and a half percent just over 100 dollars per share i mean i literally can't believe i'm saying this but it actually happened for context over the last one year tesla stock officially down 69 nice percent year to date down almost 73 percent since its all-time high closing price 
down over 73%. And since starting the YouTube channel, Tesla stock officially down, wait, I mean up, almost 400%. 52 week high, $402.67. 52 week low, $108.75. Let that sink in. Just a quick heads up to any other haters, and I know you're watching Masturbating Furiously. Don't nut yet, because in a moment, I'm gonna share my lost porn for 2022, all of my Tesla stock purchases going back to day one, my average purchase price, total shares, etc. just so you can fap, 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 and laugh at my catastrophic loss. Oh wait, no, because they're not, because I haven't sold, because, oh yeah. Okay. Anyway, if you'd like to rub one out, enjoy how much money I've quote unquote lost, get ready. Okay, so here's the money shot. Don't not too quickly, we've got a lot to cover. First of all, 2016, the amount I invested in Tesla stock in US dollars, just under 80,000 bucks. Average price per share, split adjusted of course, they're all split adjusted, 14 bucks. Picked up over 5,000 shares, 5,400 to be exact. Now if you're a super nerd, I've got a couple of extra columns here as well. Of all money I've ever invested in Tesla stock, in 2016 I invested just 3.45%, yet that accounts for almost one quarter of all the Tesla stock I own. In 2017, I invested about half as much, just under 35,000 US dollars, average price 16 bucks. You guys can see the numbers, let's run through a bit quicker. In 2018, I invested about $37,000, 18 bucks a share. 2019, about $50,000, 17 bucks a share. In 2020, $280,000, about 80 bucks a share. 2021, almost $800,000, $266 per share. Well over double what Tesla's currently trading for. Keyword, trading for. And in 2022, year to date, I've invested almost 1 million US dollars. Caveat there, about half of this amount actually coming from equity and real estate because that's how I roll. Can't get margin called on that. Average price, $255 per share. Again, more than double where Tesla stock is currently at. If you're a visual person, a few little charts here. Average price on Tesla stock per year, obviously, 2016, 17, 18, and 19, Tesla stock just dirt cheap. Kind of reminds me of where it's at now. Did I say that out loud? No. Four years, Tesla stock basically did nothing. In terms of the price, $14, $16, $18, and $17 average price for those four years. Then out of nowhere, the stock market went, hang on, uh, I'm not sure that makes sense. Next minute, Tesla to the moon. So as we can see, in 2021, my average price was $266 per share, 15 to 20 times higher than I was paying just a few years prior. And I still think in a decade's time, these are gonna look like ridiculous purchases. Doesn't matter whether it's 2016, 18, 19, 20, 22. The next chart, Tesla shares bought per year. In 2016, the most number of Tesla shares I was able to accumulate in a single year getting close to 6,000. Despite Tesla stock increasing in price, my income has also increased during this period of time. I was actually retired for a couple of years here as well, so I had super low income, but I managed to continue accumulating. This is what long-term conviction looks like. I'm smart enough to know I'm not smart enough to time the market. Now, you might be smarter than me. You may also live somewhere that there's no capital gains tax in which you can trade in and out and read some charts and determine exactly where Tesla stock's gonna go ahead of time. I don't care about where Tesla's at. I'm not trying to outsmart the market. I'm looking long-term and thinking, hmm, in a decade or so, is this gonna be a good buy? Will I be glad that I purchased the stock? If so, buy, simple as that. When I have money, I buy. If you're smarter than me, go for your life. I'm not that smart, I just buy, I hold. In a decade or so, I'll be very happy. And again, you might notice, I've been investing the Tesla stock now for seven years, haven't sold a share, and I still think it's early. First piece of real estate I bought back in 2010, still own it, and that was always a 30 to 40 plus year plan. We can also see the amount I invested in Tesla stock per year in this chart, and the final chart, you may wanna pause to let this one sink in. Percent of money invested versus the percent of shares bought. I was getting much better value for my money back in 2016. And one final thing, hope the haters haven't busted a nut yet. Stay tuned, this is the big one. I'm just summing up all Tesla stock purchased in 2022, just in 2022. My total quote unquote loss, <laughs> zero dollars. I'm just kidding. Actually, no, I'm not kidding. But my on paper loss, down 561,000 US dollars. How about we add 2021 into the mix? Officially down $1,020,000 on paper. Welcome back. Tesla shares down another 5% in the pre-market on pace for the worst ever year for the stock. Today's drop comes on reports that the electric car maker has extended a production halt at its Shanghai factory. Joining us now with more is Craig Irwin of Roth Capital. Craig, uh, good to have you on. You got a neutral rating, $85 price target. Walk me through, I guess, your take on Tesla, which seems pretty bearish. Yeah, we, we've been consistent on this one over the last, I guess, 18 months, two years. We've seen Tesla is egregiously overvalued. We knew that there would be several compelling um, alternatives coming into the market from uh, both new and established uh, brands. And that's really what's playing out. I mean, you see some very, very successful entries uh, from Porsche, um, from uh, Ford, uh, from many, many others like Polestar. I mean, so some of, some of, some of the, the newer names are doing well, too. 
and uh, you know they're 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 growing at a more attractive growth rate than Tesla. Forty five percent is still fantastic, um, but you know there's better places to put money, and uh, you know people are uh, are obviously liquidating their their Tesla positions and uh, and putting money elsewhere. So you see this? You're talking about increased competition, maybe waning demand for Tesla products. You see this as a fundamental. Uh, story for Tesla and the sell-off we've seen in the stock. You don't see this as a correction in terms of multiples, given the fact that we've had interest rates increase and we've seen some of these high-flying tech names, which Tesla was lumped in with, uh, come off pretty aggressively in terms of valuation this year. Yeah, no, you, you, you can always point at multiple things. For, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm an, you know, an analyst focusing on, on an individual industry, right? So when I saw Tesla as valued at a multiple of the rest of the automotive sector uh, combined, that I called egregiously overvalued. So yes, you can point to interest rates, you can point to um, short-term economic conditions and a variety of other things, you know, like like um, COVID, for example, and the um, mm -hmm. COVID, COVID enforcement in China. But the reality is that um, others are doing a good job too. Tesla blazed the way. Um, Tesla did a fantastic job. They have great products, but they need to do a better job they need to hurry up and do things like get the mini car on the road. Oh, Craig, honey. Did I just call him honey? Why would I do that? Anyway, we're going to keep rolling. No fucks given. In case anyone watching is unaware, this is already designed their next-gen vehicle. It will enter production when it's necessary, but not before. And I personally believe that Tesla will make the interval between when it's announced and first deliveries begin as short as possible. Otherwise, many people go, the fuck would I buy a Model 3 or Y when I can buy this thing for like 10 grand less? I personally think over the longer term, the Model Y plus 3 combined globally will sell up to 4 million units per year. Today, they're around 1.5 million. Tesla can continue ramping up production on these things in multiple factories well before they'll ever need to drop the more affordable vehicle. People aren't understanding this. And from Craig's comments, it almost seems like he thinks there's going to be any other company on the earth who will produce a compelling vehicle in a similar price range to Tesla's more affordable next-gen vehicle. Good luck with that. No one outside of China is actually making any money on EVs besides Tesla at this point in time. No one can undercut Tesla on price. They just can't do it. Believe it or not, Tesla actually knows what they're doing. They've already told us the more affordable vehicle is up their sleeve. They're just waiting. Doesn't make sense to release it now. Why would you? It will come when it's necessary, but not before. Um, and bite the bullet, build that factory in India, put a battery factory in India, and uh, you know, dominate that market as well. Th these are things that will give people in co confidence in longer term growth. You know, this dancing actor in a robot suit is like a joke. Well, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. According to Craig Irwin, the Tesla bot is a joke. Let's check back in in, I don't know, maybe a decade's time and see how his comments have aged. And a lot of people that um, look at what was actually shown later as the state of the art for, you know, 2014. You know, you, you look at the semi truck, it's something that doesn't make fundamental sense. I'm really struggling here. We just heard the Tesla bot is a joke and now the Tesla semi doesn't make fundamental sense? The f*** is this guy talking about? I actually don't understand what point he's trying to make here. What do you mean it doesn't make fundamental sense? Deliveries have already commenced. People want them. They're going to have an order backlog that runs years. Doesn't make sense. Tesla's mission, accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. The semi. Semis account for an outsized amount of emissions. Obviously, they're on the road all the fucking time. What is he talking about? Oh, wait, I think I get it. Ah, yes, I get it. I think the point he's making here is the stock market's too dumb to realize the impact of Tesla semi. Therefore, Tesla needs to release some products that will make investors get excited rather than products that will actually sell for years to come, have a huge backlog and massive profit margin that also align with their mission. I think I get it now. Everything Craig is saying is through pumping Tesla stock rather than executing on their mission. It's true. There's not that many retail investors that are going to get a semi over the semi, except those people watching the channel. Tesla needs to get back to its knitting. They need to focus on the mini car. They need to focus on you know, um, India and growth markets. And, you know, it's a good company. They probably will. Well, where, where does all of the other stuff, let's just like the stuff, where does that factor in? Whether it's the Musk selling shares, whether it's the distraction from Twitter, if, if you didn't have the concerns that you obviously do around competition and some of the other fundamental issues around the company, how would your rating be influenced, if at all, by the other things that investors are keenly focused on right now. Yeah, so, so what, what had people concerned in the last, just say, few weeks um, is the fact that uh, there was, there was uh, an understanding that Elon Musk was looking for another billion dollars for Twitter. So we saw Elon Musk with uh, Jared Kushner um, in Abu Dhabi at the World Cup. You know, Jared Kushner successfully raised money over there. Um, you know, there, there obviously is a leadership um, issue for Tesla and for Twitter. 
you know, I think from a trading perspective, probably one of the best catalysts for um, anyone long Tesla would be if someone like um, Jack Dorsey or Dick Costello was to go back to Twitter, because then uh, people would expect that Elon would refocus his attention back on Tesla. You know, my friends that are sort of in in, in that little ecosystem say that uh, that Mr. Musk is very concerned about the stock price. Obviously, we did see him, see him say that, that he's not going to be selling stock for the same period of time. Um, but I think he really needs to focus on operations, focus on giving us great cars. He's done a good job so far. 45% growth, pretty impressive. It's just overvalued. So a couple of reasonable points there, Craig Irwin. Praising Tesla, good execution, they'll probably be fine, blah, blah, blah. Spoiler alert, they will. Then he goes on to underscore the fact that he believes Tesla stock is currently overvalued. Ladies and gentlemen, as I speak to you, at the end of 2022, companies that produce diabetes in a can have higher forward PEs than Tesla. A slow-growing burrito company, likewise, that's right. Coke, Pepsi, Chipotle, with higher multiples than Tesla currently has. So either Craig is saying that Chipotle, Coke, and Pepsi are egregiously overvalued as well, or he just continues to say Tesla is overvalued because someone's telling him to. I didn't say that out loud. You imagine that. But we're doing it now uh, because I think it's the most interesting story in the market. It's Tesla. Uh, right now, it hits another new low. The market cap has fallen now below Walmart and JP Morgan. That's stunning in and of itself. If you consider where it started this year, Joe, it was north of $1.2 trillion, okay? Now, it is, as I look at it now, it is like $355 billion. That to me is emblematic of the story of the year in the stock market itself for stocks like that. Without question. The, the beginning of the downfall for Tesla was in early April when Elon Musk announced the stake in Twitter. At that point, the stock was 10% higher on the year. Not 10% okay. higher than where it is now. 10% higher in the on green. the year. In the green. In the year. Subsequent to that, in four separate stock sales, Elon Musk has sold $23 billion worth of stock. Now, he's tried to defend the stock. He has split the stock. He has dangled a stock buyback. He has said he will no longer be the CEO of Twitter. He's attempted everything he possibly can. What he cannot do is he cannot defend against the massive ownership that existed in this company. And unfortunately for those that do own it, the cost of capital has changed so dynamically that that ownership is being liquidated in what I think is one of the most dramatic equity liquidations I've witnessed since 2000. Well, this is a very important point. One, he's right. Huge number of investors, mostly institutional, are currently dumping Tesla stock. In the last few days, Tesla volume, daily trading volume, significantly above average. And I mean significantly. Overnight, for example, Tesla stock volume yesterday, double the three month average double we're seeing a catastrophic amount of selling which is causing the stock to collapse and collapse and collapse and he's right perfect summary tesla stock has now effectively done a 2000.com bubble crash in my opinion certainly doesn't make sense but it has happened so momentum is a powerful thing powerful up and down now you own the stock we do through the joe t etf correct now if i'm a betting man and sometimes i am a betting man I'm thinking that when you rebalance, which is coming at the end of the year, and we're going to find out shortly after that what end the of January, holding, end, of January. end of January current mm -hmm. holdings are, that Tesla may not be in the Joe T. Can you give us an idea, if you're able to, uh, on how you're thinking about this right now? I'm going to give you my best Bill Belichick. I'm on overtime the last day of January. So you're on to Cincinnati, in other words. Correct. You're not, you're not talking about it now. And it's, I'm sure, because uh, just from a regulatory standpoint, I, I would imagine that you're, you're not able to get into any sort of you know, key details about that. However, Jenny, how are we supposed to think about what's happening here as it sort of relates to the overall narrative in the stock market? Because I, I think they're tied together. I think so. And actually, Scott, as I was driving in, I was listening to the radio, and you said something that was so smart that I texted it to myself so I'd requote it. You said, we are re-rating everything because of what lies ahead.
And that, to me, that sentence encapsulates everything that's going on. That's Tesla, that's Peloton, which is what I think you were talking about. It's the reason energy up is, is up, it's the reason utilities up. Everything's being re-rated. It's not all in one direction. It's not all negative. Some of it's quite positive. But when we look at, at Twitter, where, sorry, when we look at Tesla, where I disagree with Joe a little bit is it wasn't, it wasn't Twitter that created the downfall, it was that the share price never should have been what it was. And that brings me back to that Charlie Munger quote, which I'm gonna completely botch, which is something like any wonderful com company can be turned into a terrible investment simply by driving up the share price too much. And that's what happened. That's what happened over the past several years. These share prices just got- You think Twitter had nothing to do? Twitter was a catalyst that accelerated something that had to happen. Okay, so if the stock was standing at the edge of the cliff- Something else It was Twitter, happen. no, it was Twitter Anything that pushed it over. Uh, no, because I think it you never guys are, I been... think you guys can both be right. I think you're right. I think you yeah. guys can both be right. I think was Twitter was the most recent uh, episode to puncture one of the tires, but the car was already in trouble because of where we are, mm -hmm. what the Fed is doing, and as I said this morning, what lies ahead still. I, I'm sorry I disagree with both of you. The stock was 10% higher at the beginning of April. The market was already down. There was a degree of resiliency built into the stock. But there was, but only into the stock price. The thing is, it was trading back then at what, like 10 times the collective value of every single automotive company in the world. Some times people think two. it's a tech company. You know, okay, but it just didn't make sense. At some point, the future cash flows need to justify the current valuation. Call me crazy, but I think Tesla's future cash flows more than justify even the all-time high price. You may disagree, that's totally fine. If you want to see the assumptions in terms of future cash flow, head over to Patreon at the investor level and above, check out my valuation model. You can see all the assumptions, net profit, gross automotive margin, total vehicle sold, on and on and on and on and on. Looking at Tesla's current stock price, you would think the stock market has completely forgotten that Tesla is the only company outside China profitably making EVs at scale. They are far and away the most compelling technology. They've forgotten that too. They've forgotten the autonomous stuff. I mean, hello, did you not see FSD beta wide release? Uh, yeah, okay, no. Forgotten Tesla's exceptional talent, their manufacturing techniques. They got so many competitive advantages. So much going on. So much potential future cash flow. Even with Tesla Insurance, a supercharging network. It's just so bizarre. Hello, Tesla, Chipotle, Pepsi, Coke. If you say so, stock market. And there was no version of Tesla at its peak that was ever justifiable. Not for like 30 years of growth. And so that's what's happening. And that's what happened. It came down. It's just... It's just reconciling. The whole year is about reconciliation. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a fine way to put it. There, there's one you know, more thing, ahead, Scott. I, go ahead, Michael, because if I'd have told you at the beginning of the year when Tesla was in the trillion dollar club with the Microsofts and the Apples, uh, and I said that at the end of the year, it was going to be in the Walmart club uh, with a market cap that obviously <laughs> is respectable, uh, any company would be respectable to have a $350 billion market cap. But if I had told you that it was going to right. go from 1.24 trillion to 355 billion, you told me I was crazy. Not me. I would have said you're smart. In fairness, if you had told me at the start of the year, same shit, I would not have believed you. I couldn't have imagined a 70 plus percent crash. Not because it's not possible, but because I thought surely at some point, big investors, big institutional investors start thinking, hang on, it's cheaper than Coke and Pepsi and Chipotle. <laughs> Better buy. Apparently not. Panic, 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 sell, sell, sell. Between you and I, I hope the panic and mayhem continues. The lower the better. I got no idea how low Tesla stock could go, but I will continue to pray to the flying spaghetti monster in the hope, which I know isn't a strategy, but hey, it's all I got. In the hope that Tesla stock can continue to provide an extended, an extreme discount because I'm still buying with every spare cent. My prayers to the flying spaghetti monster have been more than answered. I cannot believe what is happening now, but I'll take it. So let me know in the comments below. Are you buying? Are you crying? Both and also... How low will Tesla stock ultimately go? Don't forget to head over to Patreon with the card in the corner or the link below. I shared more thoughts on exactly what's going on right now in the stonk market, including Tesla stock, and some more details on my Tesla price targets and valuation models. So I'll see you over there. Love ya.